Every year, Venice attracts about 18 million tourists and probably just as many pigeons. They come to see the beautiful architecture, the wonderful canals, but me, I'm here for a different reason. I want to see the wild side of Italy. I'm Europe bound, exploring Italy's fire from below, it's snow from above and rising water that's threatening an entire city. Oh! Italy, like you've never seen it before. Italy, a beautiful place with a rich history, but it's also one of the only spots in the world where you can find flooding, avalanches, and erupting volcanoes all in the same country. Italy is a place of geographical contrasts, from low-lying coastal areas to the highest mountain peaks. Italians have had a long love affair with the Alpine world. For many here, skiing and hiking in the Alps is a way of life, but living and playing in the mountains comes with some risks. Italy is among the most avalanche-prone countries in the world. Every year, scores of people are injured and killed as unstable snowpacks crash down mountainsides. Although attempts are made to control the dangerous buildup of snow, tragedies still occur. The best way to see the avalanche terrain here in the Dolomite Mountains is, of course, by helicopter. Time to climb aboard and head up into the mountains. From the air, you get a better sense of the massive amount of snow that can accumulate in the mountains. The threat here is so great, there is an entire industry dedicated to avalanche control. They do things a little differently in Italy. This is the avalanche blast. Now, because there are problems with transporting dynamite and having sticks of dynamite that get tossed and don't explode up in the mountains, they've come up with this solution. And it uses two parts hydrogen gas and one part oxygen. There's a canister here. It loads up these balloons that inflate with the gas. And then there's an electric igniter. Boom! The shock wave dislodges the snow, brings down the avalanche. This ingenious device is safer to use than conventional explosives. It can be lowered into a precise location and fired remotely from the chopper. The inventors hope this prototype, the only one of its kind, will lead the way to more effective methods of snow control. Look at the incredible amount of snow one blast brings down. Engineers seem to be conquering the problem of too much snow in the Italian Alps. But can they keep the ancient city of Venice from becoming submerged? Thank you.
Venice is thought to be the most romantic of all cities. The gondola rides past exquisite, centuries-old architecture. The historic bridges and shops help attract over 18 million visitors every year to this iconic destination. But the water on which this city appears to float may one day lead to its catastrophic demise. Venice is constructed on a series of log platforms buried in the silt of the lagoon. The ever-increasing tidal range is eroding the silt, and the city is slowly sinking. What a pain in the ass to build a city on an island like this, just above sea level. Like, what were they thinking? It must have been so difficult to construct, and yet totally at the whim of the Adriatic. And while the structures sink, Factors like changing weather patterns are steadily increasing the water levels coming into the lagoon, causing damaging floods like the one in 1966. It was a significant event, devastating to the city and a warning of what could lie ahead for Venice. With so much of Venice lying just centimeters above sea level, it's pretty easy to imagine how badly this area can flood when the tide rises high and there's a storm. Now, the Italian government has put together an incredible plan to help stem the flooding here in Venice, and it's called Mose. The Mose system is one of the most ambitious construction projects in Europe today. In order to control the ever-increasing risk of severe floods in the lagoon, the Italian engineers have come up with an ingenious idea. They're building a series of massive underwater floodgates that can be raised or lowered by filling the panels with either air or water. The system can be engaged during periods of high tide or storm surge to protect the city. But why not just permanently barricade the water from the lagoon? Site manager Enrico Pellegrini explains. You cannot just close the inlets and say, say we preserve the lagoon. You have to keep the tide going on. Because the tide is the mean by you can change the water of the lagoon. Right, it's the when natural you, breath it's of the, the natural lagoon. Breath of the lagoon. So the tide is very important. This engineering marvel will take over eight years to complete. And the challenges are enormous. 25,000 tons yeah. of concrete and steel yes. being positioned underwater, yeah. 12 meters underwater, yeah. with millimeters worth of accuracy. Yeah. OK, sounds simple. Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's not the simple, of course. <laughs> but this project is vital to the thousands who live here, to the preservation of their rich history, and to the millions who visit this amazing city every year. There will be always a lot of visitors in Venice, and that is the reason why we have to save Venice for the, for the future. The threat from the sea could lead to a catastrophe in Italy. But 2,000 years ago, their most infamous disaster came from the core of the Earth. On August 24, 79 AD, the city of Pompeii was entombed by a massive eruption from Mount Vesuvius. For two days and nights, the volcano rained terror on all those in its path, killing almost everyone in the city. After the eruption, Pompeii was lost and forgotten for almost 1,700 years. It's hard to imagine this entire city completely buried by volcanic pyroclastic flows coming down from Mount Vesuvius. But that's exactly what happened here in 79 AD. The city was completely covered in ash and cinders, preserving the city. And it actually gives us a really good glimpse into what life was like back in ancient Roman times.
Pompeii was so perfectly preserved and so carefully uncovered that walking the streets here is a surreal experience. The whole city is a window into the Roman Empire, frozen in time, at the height of its power. 300 years ago, when the unearthing of Pompeii began, 18th century archaeologists made an amazing discovery. During the eruption, the population was entombed by the volcanic ash and pumice that rained down. And when the archaeologists started excavating the site, they found these empty spaces and they filled them in with plaster. And you can actually see the features of these bodies from the ancient Pompeians. For someone who spends a lot of time around active volcanoes, it is very sobering to see the tragic results of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. The people of Pompeii are gone, but Vesuvius is still here, threatening other cities that live in its shadow. is facing a very similar problem that Pompeii did. Naples is building, there's new construction, super highways, a big population, but Vesuvius is always present. If it erupts again, it would spell certain disaster for the city of Naples. The government is so concerned that they're actually paying families tens of thousands of euros to move away from the danger zone. Despite the warnings, millions continue to live in the region. But Naples is not the only Italian city threatened by erupting volcanoes. This is just the beginning of my journey through volcanic Italy. What I need to do now is find a volcano that I can actually get to that's erupting. That's my next plan of attack. And I think I know just the one. I'm in Italy going after volcanoes. But as usual, Mother Nature has her own ideas. So my plan right now is to try and visit Europe's largest volcano, which is Mount Etna. It's located on the island of Sicily in southern Italy. And my big concern today is the weather. It's raining a lot. And up at 3,000 meters, it's going to be probably snowing a lot. So I don't know if I'm going to get the chance to see anything up there. We'll see what Mother Nature has in the car. Mount Etna is the largest active volcano in Europe. Known for its massive eruptions and intense lava flows, Etna is a force to be reckoned with. When Etna blows its top, it destroys everything in its way. With hundreds of eruptions over the last century, Etna poses a serious threat to many nearby towns. Etna doesn't want any visitors today. And now we're entering the snow zone. Every minute, it gets worse and worse. Ooh, slipping and sliding. It's bizarre. I'm in southern Italy, and it's like I'm in the Rockies without the snow tires. Come on, let's go. When I go after something, I don't give up easily. Yeah, go, 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 go. This way. No, not that way. We have an entire mountain to climb like this, and it's not gonna work. Now, we're gonna have to turn around here. We have no choice. 
not about getting to the top anymore, it's about getting back down. Damn you, Etna! Damn you! It is disappointing, but I have one more Italian volcano up my sleeve. Stromboli rises 1,000 meters out of the Tyrrhenian Sea, off the coast of Sicily. At the foot of the volcano, a village of 700 people goes about its day, seemingly unfazed by living on one of the world's most active volcanoes. I meet up with my guide, Zaza, and we navigate the incredibly narrow streets up to the base, the starting point for the 1,000 meter trek to the summit. One of the things that makes Stromboli so fantastic is that it is basically in a constant state of eruption all day, every day. So the chances of coming here and seeing volcanic activity are very, very high. Note the caution sign, beware. Do not trespass this limit. High risk of landslide and volcanic eruption. For someone like me, this reads as an invitation. This is where the climb gets tough. Steep terrain and tricky footing. But Zaza and his trusty dog, Pele, know the way. We're getting to the point now where there's not much vegetation, but lots of ash and rock. All this is volcanic ash that's been piling up over probably hundreds of years from all these different eruptions. It's lining this whole trail. like the steep part. This trail I just came across is right along an old landslide path. The side of this whole chunk of mountain at one point just dropped. push to the summit, got my helmet on, get up to the top, you get a nice look down into the crater of Stromboli. Oh, eruption right here, look at this. These emergency shelters are here in case people are up here when the volcano has a catastrophic eruption and they're meant to be a bit of a refuge. The idea is you come in here and hide <laughs> as the giant blocks of lava and rock are being hurled at you. This is not a good sign here on the shelter. This is an impact crater here. This giant boulder flew out of the volcano. I'm in Italy, exploring the volcano Stromboli, which has been erupting continuously and often violently for the last 2,000 years. And it doesn't disappoint me today. Wow, oh, big ash cloud coming up right now. Look at this, sweet. Right now, that was an ash eruption. The white that you're seeing is mostly water vapor with a little bit of sulfur dioxide gas. So this volcano has it all. a good spot over here. Uh, 
hiking up to the summit, you get really warm, but up here, it's really quite cold. But the volcano is very hot. It's active like crazy. There's about four vents that are going right now. They're spitting out lava bombs, ash, gas, all kinds of uh, sulfur dioxide. It's amazing. You can watch. There's a little vent down here, and you can watch it puff and breathe. It's like watching the volcano actually breathing. This is cool. E anche lì posso spiegare la. Zaza tells me of his passion for exploring this explosive volcano. Sì. Ai, così. Ai. Ehi là. 30 anni fa io sono salito la prima volta qua. Sì. Sen 30 anni, 78. Poi sono e ogni ogni volta che tu sali è diverso. La prima volta è la più bella. As darkness falls, I get set for Stromboli's show. Well, tonight it looks like there's four different vents that are active on Stromboli. This one down here behind me is spitting out a lot of gas. It's glowing, but it's not really exploding. If we get really lucky, we'll get one of these vents shooting a huge plume of magma into the air. See? That's what I'm talking about. Woohoo! That is a big eruption. Nice. <laughs> That's the kind of eruption that I love to see. Giant jets of lava shooting up in the air, glowing hot rocks. It blows my mind to see it in person. What an awesome way to end my Italian adventure. From the breathtaking exploding peaks of Stromboli and Etna to the canals of Venice Italy is a fascinating corner of our angry planet <laughs>